What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Ableton series. Okay, so this has been a series that I've been waiting to do for a long time. But as you can see, I'm in a new space. This is our church's video production studio. So I was waiting for this space to get done for us to go ahead and get started. This is a lot better than doing it in the kitchen in my house. So um, here we are. The Ableton series, these are going to be real quick tutorials just showing you how to get around Ableton and how to use it for your church. Ableton can be, in my opinion, when I first started with Ableton, it was so intimidating. Uh, it's a very intimidating program. Um, I'm here to help you with that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up our session. And what we're going to talk about in this video specifically is just how to use session view for church. The most simplest way when I first started using Ableton, this is how I used Ableton. So, okay, when you open up Ableton, you're going to see something like this, similar to this, except you'll over here, you have a uh, reverb and delay um, bus and you have two audio tracks and two MIDI tracks. So I set it up to where none of that stuff is there because I always ended up deleting it. So this is what my Ableton session looks like right now. So we're going to go in here. I'm going to extend this out right here, master, and we're going to be working with these stems right here, Elias Orava. So for all my Hispan or American folks, this is a Hispanic classic song that we made uh, some stems to for our service. The reason why I'm using these stems is so in the video, I don't get copyrighted. And since we're talking about that, make sure to thumbs up this video. Make sure to subscribe. It's going to help out the channel a lot, especially with this new series that we have going on in Ableton. All right, so you're going to click on this right here. It's going to open this section um, down here where it says places. You can assign uh, where you want it. It's basically shortcuts, so you don't have to go and find or and drag them in. It's always going to be there. So on here, I have my desktop where I have my stems, right? So in my stems, I'm going to open this folder. Organ, all of these, you see, these are our stems right here. So I'm going to press shift. You want to make sure you hold shift and click on the last one. And then as you're dragging it, you want you see how it's, it's um, horizontal right now? You want it to be vertical. No, it's vertical right now. You want it to be horizontal. Sorry, I got, you know, I got taken out right there. So to change that, you're going to press command. And when you press command, now it's horizontal. So you let that go. Why do you want it to be like this? Because when we trigger the scene, it's going to play all of these at the same time horizontally, right? So these right here are basically your songs. And uh, this right here are your stems within your songs, okay? So we're looking at it like a grid. When I press play, it's going to play... It's going to play all my stems there at the same time. That's what we want. We want all of them to be played at the same time. Okay, so let's let's go uh, deeper into this. So I'll go ahead and I will put, uh, I'll rename this, and I'll put Elias Oraba. All right, I got that. What's our BPM? The BPM is important because we want it to match uh, with the session as well. Uh, it says right here that we have 147. Okay, so I'll go... 147 okay so now the way that i can test that is by turning on our click which our click is over here right so oh my bad i have to One, trigger two. the reason why that happened was because our our overall session wasn't at the same bpm because i didn't trigger it from right there so One, it's matching two. and that's it you just let the stems play and you'll be you'll be biscuits and gravy. So basically what you do is you drag in each song, press option or command, it drags them in horizontal, and then one last trick, and then we'll be out of here. I told you these are gonna be super quick tutorials. You can just watch these, apply them, and learn, and we'll keep growing. Um command K, okay? You press command K, you press the play button right here where our first song is. I'm pressing the one key. All right, and then check this out. This is what I love. When I press one on my keyboard, it's gonna trigger the song. One. It's that simple. You just drag, play, and you'll be good to go. Let's talk about routing real quick. And this could be a different video that we'll take more time on. I just want to make sure that you're ready for your first service, okay? Right here at the bottom where it says cue outs, we'll go one is our click, and then two is our track or master, okay? So basically, one is what we're going to send to the in-ears, and two is what we're going to send to the house. And like I said, we'll work on a whole different video just talking about all the possible outcomes for routing. But for right now, we're just talking about a quick, simple, I need I need to use Ableton tomorrow. That's what we're working on. If you need to use Ableton tomorrow for your service or for a rehearsal, this is going to get you through, okay? So then right here, our important stuff is we're looking for our click and our guides. So I drag my click all the way to the beginning, 
Just because I always want to know where that stuff is. And then my guide all the way to the beginning or to the top, right? So then right here, right here where you see at the bottom where it says audio to master, we're going to go external out, okay? So audio to master, external out. And we're going to assign. It's basically that simple. I, and like I, I know, I know, I know Ableton can look so confusing and scary at the beginning, but it's really not. OK, we just go there, assign our audio to the click, and now it's going to be routed to the click. So when we play it, we don't even hear it because it's routed to that specific channel, to the channel one. Right. Um, and that's just going off of a two channel interface or off of the headphone jack. OK, so that's a I know I know we sped through this video, but I just really want to make it uh, to where you can watch it, learn and apply. I am not a fan of tutorials on YouTube where you're watching it and the tutorial is 20 minutes long for something that takes 50 seconds to explain. So. I pray that this video was a blessing to you. Even now, just you know, you might have known some of this stuff. Um, you know, that's 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 the goal. If you guys have anything that you would like to learn in Ableton, we're getting ready to go into some deep stuff. Some videos are going to be much longer than others. Uh, some might be twenty minutes. Man, some might be even thirty minutes um, because of how deep we talk about it. But I just want to be a blessing to you guys. And if you guys have any questions as far as running tracks in a service or using Ableton. Uh, let me know in the comments, and and I'll 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 definitely put that on the list of stuff that we need to go over. Um, I, there's not a single service that goes by that I don't use Ableton. Uh, there's not even a single rehearsal that goes by that I don't use Ableton. That's how important it is, and how much of an asset and how much of a great tool it is to worship ministry and to my local ministry at my church. So like I said, pray that this video was a blessing. Make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments if there's anything specifically that you want us to go over in the future. But other than that, that's it for this video on how to put songs in for session view for a service. I love y'all. Y'all take care. God bless.